Okay, what is up YouTube? I'm back again, uh, two days in a row, back on a streak. It's all gonna end uh, after tomorrow though because then I'm back in school. But I'll talk about that tomorrow, I guess. Uh, here we're going to be uh, making some changes to the thing I worked on in the previous video, the whole server menu. Um, this is the first time we'll actually be interacting with said server. Um, but yeah, uh, we're gonna implement how to SSH into the server and pinging the server and all sorts of network things. And honestly, after seeing like the first five minutes of the video, you might be able to implement any other network related idea you want. If it's a Linux command, you can do it with this menu and you'll see why. Ow, my hand just hit the mic. Uh, you'll see why in a second. Um, but yeah, uh, I think we can just get right into it. Okay, so here we are. We're back at where we were yesterday. And what I wanted to do is I want to put this match inside of a loop because I'm going to actually add a couple of extra choices for the um, menu. So we're going to have query server uh, and then we're going to have ping server. And then we're also going to have exit all the way at the bottom. So, and then here, if we get, um, for right now, we'll just add a uh, println pinging. And then here, if we get an exit, we're just going to break out of the loop, right? Uh, this way, we just exit the program. Why is the Rust formatter like this? That's crazy. All right, that looks good enough. Um, yeah, we do need to work in a different file now. Uh, I have network.rs set up here. So let's just import some of that stuff. Okay. And in network.rs, we're going to be using two uh, crates, two external crates. One is nix and one is exec. Let me show you what nix is first. Um, these are Rust bindings to Unix APIs. So basically, if you're on Windows right now, what are you doing? First of all, switch to Linux. Second of all, um, if you don't want to, use WSL or use a virtual machine uh, because this is not going to work on Windows, obviously. Uh, but anyway, these are like pretty sick, right? Um, if I were, I'll, I'm going to show later all the things, but you got tons of Unix APIs, uh, function calls in Nix, and it basically just wraps the uh, libc functions. Oh, it says right here, uh, wrapping the libc functionality with types and extra options that enforce legal and safe usage. It's so, like that's sick, right? And um, yeah, that's awesome. And then we're also going to use exec, a Rust library to replace the running program with another. All my C brothers out there, uh, I don't know if any other language has this, I've never tried it. Uh, brothers and sisters, I should say, uh, know about exec, exec VP, exec uh, LP, all those things. I don't remember all of them. I'm going to be honest, I don't actually know the difference between all of them. I have a cheat sheet somewhere uh, in my room that I made last year for a class. Um, got the Linux man page here. Essentially, exec, you take a process, uh, you do the exec com uh, function with whatever Unix command you want, really, and boom, right? It replaces the process with the uh, name of the executable that you input, right? So if I do like exec VP, or uh, I guess we can just go back to here, you see how they do echo and then hello world? 
it replaces the process spawned with uh, whenever you execute this executable that you would build with Rust compilation uh, with the echo process from the echo command and it passes in hello world and it would execute that and after that it would it would finish right like uh, the process is over there's no getting back to the old process as far as I know of uh, there's no getting back to the old process so we need to fork um, the original process run exec in the child process that way we can still keep the original process because you don't want your program to just okay quit after you run like one command anyway that's enough talking um, let's add this cargo add nix look at that boom got a bunch of stuff here you got some socket stuff I uh, got mman fs io control ptrace ptread uh i haven't used any of these yet i've only used fork i don't know where fork is it's in uni standard where is that i don't know where it is i can't see it uh and then we're also going to do cargo add exec see um so now we can say use nix sys wait wait we want to wait uh in the parent process uh, we're going to do use nix. What are you talking about? I don't care. Nix um, uni standard fork results. And we want to know when we're in the child or her parent. Um, and we also do the fork function. And then we're also just going to import the whole like, exec crate. It's really small. And then we're going to use std process. Okay. Um, here, I'll, I can just show you some of the Unix stuff. This is all the stuff that they showed um, in the download thing from Cargo. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff here. Right? Target OS, all of the Unix operating systems. All of the major ones. Would this work on Nix OS? I don't know. I mean, Nix is technically Linux, right? I don't remember. No idea. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. So let's do our first function, SSH into. And right now, I'm going to hard code uh, the IP address that I want to SSH into on my local network. Later on, uh, I'm going to make the configuration file video tomorrow, probably. And it'll load all of this information from the configuration file. It's going to be a YAML file. Um, but yeah, we're going to let PID equal fork. Uh, we can do expect fork failed. Okay, if it's a child, um, this is like the actual fun part, right? This is where we do stuff. We're going to let r equal exec command new ssh, right? So immediately now we know this program is going to be completely overwritten and memory, the whole process control block uh, is going to be used for ssh now. It's over. The original process is dead. The child is dead. I quote Game of Thrones. Kill the boy so the man may live. Shout out to my boy Anon Targaryen. He's a real one. Anyway, uh, yeah. I mean, this is similar to the example. Uh, and this is my. This is my Raspberry Pi uh, local network address. I'm not going to put my public IP address. I do have port forwarding on my router. I, I might make a video on that. I don't know. It's really easy. I don't really see the point. But anyway, this should never return, right? It should always just fork, uh, not fork. It should always just execute uh, the new command I'm giving it. All right, so we can do error if this ever happens. And then just process exit one. There we go. 
This is cool. I was actually looking for something like uh, exit failure, exit success, like in C and C++. Uh, I never knew about the standard libraries process API. Pretty cool. Um, then if we get the parent, we got to do this. Uh, I have never seen this syntax before in Rust. Um, in the match statement where you have like brackets with the child but as you can see here it needs it so I just did it and I'm not really one to question it you gotta unwrap the result of those gonna get like some compiler warnings um, all right so this is our SSH into function um, let's see if it works Voy a la playa y a subió la marea. <risa> Eso. Eso. Había subido la marea y con subió para ella. Eso. Y la encontré porque te estaba, porque estaba la paella agarrada. Entre metí entre las piedras de chipiona, de faro. Y cuando entro en el restaurante, me ve el cocinero con una paellera y a la vente paellera. ¡A no vale! ¡A no vale! ¡Mira dónde llega el agua! ¡Bla, bla, 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 bla! ¡Llegaba el agua hasta el restaurante! <laughs> All right, SSH. Oh, this is embarrassing. Okay, Robert, edit that out, please. All right, uh, now that this is done, we can go back into the SSH into match statement, and we can say, um, here, you know what, I'm not gonna delete that, I'm just gonna leave it. Oh, geez, what's going on? All right, <laughs> oh my gosh. That's good enough. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. And now let's do network SSH into. Boom. Okay. And now we can do cargo run. If I SSH into the server. Boom. I'm on my Ubuntu server. I don't have anything on this. I actually just wiped the SD card. Uh, now because um, I couldn't reconnect to my Wi-Fi I got a new router like a week ago um, and I didn't have any network manager things installed on here so I had to just wipe the uh, server but it's okay because I didn't really have anything important on there that wasn't backed up um, as you can see there's nothing on here if I do uh, here I'll do this on the server itself let me get my keyboard uh, touch temp.txt. Now, if I do ls, you could see temp.txt is there. Then, if I remove temp.txt, it's gone. Wow. Right? Pretty crazy stuff. Um, in case you think this is all some kind of fluke, um, I have a virtual machine that I will start. Uh, right now, so we'll exit this, we'll exit this, um, let's start my virtual machine and I'll SSH into the VM and you can see both at the same time. Uh, I'm going to have to cut to when it's actually loaded up because this takes forever. Okay, I don't know how big this is for you guys. Oh jeez. Okay, 
So maybe I can make it bigger like that. Okay, that's somewhat better, I suppose. Um, here. We can do hostname-i, that's the IP address on my local network, and ends in 201. Uh, and now let's go here. Cargo run. If I SSH into it, oh, it's asking for my password. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's not Robert, it's student. SSH. Look at that, I'm here. Look at that. Boom. I got Linux 4.9. I see that's the version of the kernel. See all this. Uh, I have my tools. Oh, this is my. Uh, This is my tree command. Whoa, yeah, we're not going to do the tree command on the entire Linux kernel. Alacrity, unknown terminal type. I don't know what that means. Uh, but yeah, I mean... Whoa. Let's see, we've got all this stuff. Um, see, these are all the assignments. Uh, yeah. And when I shut this down, see, it exited. Boom. Uh, and now we're back at the menu. I don't know, I think this is pretty sick. Uh, this is just really cool to me. Uh, but yeah, we exit that. And now, so our SSH thing works, but what if we don't want to SSH into it? What if we just want to ping the server? Um, here, what we can do is pubfn ping, and it's going to be extremely similar to this. We fork it, fork failed. We can just ping the Raspberry Pi, it was 158. Um, And here, in fact, you know what we can do? We can do dash C uh, 5. We'll ping it 5 times. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, ping server. I always mess up my, like, indentations here. Uh, let's do network ping. Look at that, it's pinging the server five times, and we're done. What would I like to do? Uh, nothing. Just exit, right? So anyway, that's it for this video. Uh, I, I honestly could have made like a 45-minute video of me doing the whole thing, like uh, reading the config file. I just wanted to get like a minimum working product done right now, though. Um, so that way... I have a YouTube video for today. All right. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I thought this was cool. This is very similar to programming in C. Right? All the C uh, Linux stuff, forking, uh, exec, pretty cool stuff. Anyway, uh, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did and you're not subscribed yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button. If you are subscribed, um, thank you. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'm going to go. Peace out.